What up, guys? Uh, Players and pimps. Players and pimps. So, um, exciting news. Just shortly after the podcast, I'm freshening up and going to watch my son go to his first middle school formal. Nice, dude. Can I ask a stupid question? What is a? F- I, my middle school didn't have anything. We what didn't. Not, we didn't do that either in middle school. It's um, like a prom, and, but for middle schoolers. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Come on. Yeah. Guys. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Congrats he's, to KO. he's got a. He's got a sick outfit. He's got some like. What? Uh, like. Diamond crusted navy blue dress shoes that matches. <laughs> oh, I that like mat- it already. And a, and the same color bow tie, and it matches his girlfriend's dress. Nice. nice. Wait, what color is the dress shirt though? Uh, black, solid black. Mm. The rest of the way. Pants too. Yeah. Belt. What color is the belt? Black. <laughs> nice. Wait, so yeah. Cody's making sure he's yeah, rizzed out. Yeah, he, that, yeah, dude. Is your son is Riz Ahmed? Riz Ahmed. Well, it's good to see you guys. Yeah, good to see you guys. I feel like it's been a while since we recorded. Has it? I think it has, honestly. Maybe. Yeah, I guess. When was the last time it was Guardians? Last yeah, week. That was like two weeks. No, oh, no it was Spawn. It was Spawn. Was that last week? Yeah, last weekend. I think last I week, for sure. Oh, well. We're losing yeah. track of time here. Yeah. yeah. No, seriously. <laughs> there it is this week. Go. Oh, go. No, you go. So I've seen some bomb-ass movie trailers <laughs> today that you guys should check out especially discuss just, just did terminator there's a movie called the creator uh, Ooh. With john david Great. washington i heard about it dude the trailer looks fucking sick nice um very like t- it's about robots yeah about robots nice. and ai it's fucking it yeah cool. it's about ai basically seizing control of the government and uh holding people in a military state yeah and also like ai like in the trailer they say it like they blew up like when AI became sentient. They nuked like Los Angeles. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. So the trailer. I just watched that today, and then new Martin Scorsese movie about what was it called? Oh, Killers, Killers of the Flower. Dude, movie. that trailer. I didn't see the trailer, oh, but I've been hearing. It looks about fucking. It. Awesome. Is that the one about H.H. H. Holmes? Uh, it looked like it was about like Native Americans and like settling California. Yeah. Oh, it's like a true story. It's, it's based true, on real yeah, shit. Based on right? real shit. Yeah. Um, the trailer looked, in, you know, looked awesome. It's an Apple TV movie. Three and a half hours. What the movie? Yeah, really? <laughs> Shit. Yeah, that's what I heard too. It's a long one. Oh, I didn't know that. I don't care honestly. Like, I'll watch. Yeah, it Scorsese, Scorsese. That's Scorsese. kind of Scorsese's bread and butter. Yeah, for real. Yeah. And dude, it, it has a bomb cast. Of course, it's Leo, Robert De Niro, Jesse Plemons. Like, it, it's fucking stacked. Yeah, we know it's gonna rock. Yeah. So. yeah. But anyways, th- those are the two trailers I saw recently that both looked incredible. Yeah. For sure. And then I'm also reading some dang comics, but I'll just do this one because I have it right here. Especially because James Gunn said he's going to have it part of his DC, but I got uh, the Authority books. Who nice. started it? Started, dude, I'm almost surprisingly a quick read. Like, I'm breezing through it. Nice. nice. Um, <laughs> Jake, Jake always surprises me. It's like that book, he's like, what, like 150 pages in. But if we're like, hey, have you read like few <laughs> issues? You're like, nah. nah. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> For the record, I actually did start reading Social Justice Warriors or Justice Warriors. Nice. <laughs> so- Social justice warriors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but, uh, I did read the back cover. It counts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, uh, dude, but the authority is sick. I um, I didn't realize it was so based on Jim Lee's like Wildstorm universe. Yeah, that's the, yeah. yeah, like Stormwatch. That's yeah, yeah. Stormwatch and uh, what are they called? The Wildcats or Firecats? Wild Wildcats. Wildcats. Yeah. yeah, dude, which is cool because I have an omnibus for a comic called Sleeper, written by Ed Brubaker, drawn by Sean Phillips, but mm. based off of Jim Lee's uh, Wildcats and Firestorm universe. And it's fucking sick. And so a lot of the characters from that are in this, are in the authority. Nice. Yeah, when it comes to like my comic blank spots, like that corner of like the Vertigo DC universe or whatever, Wildcats, yeah. authority, 
like I haven't read that much. I've never read any authorities. So yeah. you're you're inspiring me to Dude. you know read some of that. N- I don't know nothing. It's pretty cool. It it looks like I guess it takes place like in the DC universe, but it doesn't really seem it because like they're kind of saving the world constantly while the other heroes are not even there. It probably takes place in the DC universe in the same way like Sandman did. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. But Sleeper, I would They're recommend. doing like the Black Ops shit. Yeah, exactly. It's more like Black Ops saving the world type shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what Sleeper is totally about. And that's all Wildcats Firestorm universe. Nice. So, so yeah, I like that, and I'm interested in the fact that, like, you're, yeah, like you're saying, James Gunn is incorporating that into his yeah. vision of the DC movie Which is universe. Cool. So, like, that's really cool. because it's such a niche corner of the DC universe that it's cool that he's going to bring it to the forefront. And that should definitely appease the Snyder Bros because it's definitely like the the grim, dark kind of like blowing shit up and everyone's dying and and heroes kill, you know, Dude, like that kind in of the thing. authority. They're like the heroes are like literally dismembering people. <laughs> like, yeah. like, Midnighter. I read Midnighter. Some Midnighter. Yeah. He's cool. Midnighter in the sleeper omnibus, he's a hero, but he's kind of brutal. Yeah, he's super brutal. Yeah. He's super brutal. He's like, he doesn't like it. Like I when I've read, like he doesn't like it. It's just a written thing about the character, but he like he's a super violent Batman, basically. Yeah. Not that Batman's not super violent, but imagine if Batman was somehow more violent. Like if he killed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's cool that Batman, like, can kill, but he just, like, refrains from doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even in the hands of Frank Miller. Ooh, hey. Hey. Unless we're counting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even in the hands of Frank Miller. Miller. (laughs) Speaking of Frank Miller, you guys. Oh, Frankie M. Frankie M. (laughs) Frankie Muniz. (laughs) Frankie Muniz. Miller in the middle. (laughs) Miller in the middle. Oh, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> a, a show about Frank Miller being the middle child would be a completely different television show. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, what if Frankie Muniz, back when he still acted, played Robin in like a Frank Miller Batman universe? <laughs> I'd rather. Hmm. I mean, no, a young no Frankie, Frankie Muniz? Yeah, yes. that'd, that'd be aight. No, I like Frankie Muniz. Yeah, yeah. I fucks with Malcolm in the Middle. Agent That's Cody one of my Banks? That's shows ever. Agent Cody Banks. <laughs> <laughs> I actually... Big fat liar. If I'm being honest, liar. I've never seen Agent Cody Banks. Neither have I. I, I just know it because it's like one of the only movies that has my name in it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, if I didn't like for me, like when that came out, maybe it was 2003, and I was like, "This is this is whack." Like I'm 13 years old, and I don't want to watch this. So for you guys who are older at that point, I doubt you would even give a shit about Agent Cody Bain. <laughs> like in high school, no way. Yeah, do you know now he's a NASCAR driver, Frankie Muniz? Yeah, he still does that. No, I, I, yeah, I have heard he he's, does. He's that. currently like he's no, he's a professional NASCAR driver. Like he's also a great dancer. He was on Dancing with the Stars, and he was like, do, like Emily was watching clips of it. She's like, wow, he's like actually doing some sick shit. He also shot his shot at Lizzo on her Instagram, and like <laughs> more like not this exactly, but was more or less along lines of like, please sit in my face type shit. And yeah, yeah, <laughs> what a power yeah, couple. Dude, he's a wild boy. <laughs> yeah, dude, <laughs> Frankie M. <laughs> Frankie M. Yes, and that is the author and artist of this comic. <laughs> yeah. I think Frankie Muniz should be in Sin City. Yeah. As Marv. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, actually, you could put him as Kevin. Yeah. He actually, I, you're gonna, I agree with that. He would be a good Kevin. <laughs> Dude, Kevin was terrifying. Kevin's a fucking monster. Terrifying. Ter- Kevin is monster. terrifying. Well, shit, let's not delay the inevitable. We need to talk about Kevin. Yeah, let's get into it, boys. Welcome to Comics and Chronic. I'm Jacob H. (laughs) (laughs) You already know who's with me. It's Cody Cannon, Anthony Iannaccio. And today we are talking Frank Miller's Sin City book one, The Hard Goodbye. Hard. Hard. Um, love the book. Also love the movie, which is essentially a shot, almost a shot for shot. Oh yeah. yeah, remake of the book. Yeah, literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even the same dialogue and ever, his narration. Same exact paneling, like yeah, mm-hmm. like seriously. Same exact shadows. Yeah. Uh, if you <laughs> no. want to go that far. Oh yeah, the movie's good, honestly. <laughs> yeah, the movie's fantastic. I love the movie. Stan, movie Stan here. <laughs> yep. Like I, this was my first time actually reading Sin City, so wow. I've seen the movie plenty of times, but I've never read it. I've read the entire series. Uh, I like a, that it's called Basin City. Basin City. That's yeah. the full name. Yeah. Yep. 
Like you find out in this, the background, like halfway through the story, you find out that the the guy he's chasing after, his family brought in prostitutes back in the day, like high class French and European prostitutes. Yeah. And that's how the city like the Rourke's. made its way. Yeah. The Rourke's, right? Senator yeah. Rourke's. Rourke's. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Senator Rourke. And, and it, yeah. Insane. Well, here, for those of you that don't know anything about Sin City, it's written by Frank Miller, published by Dark Horse. I don't know what year it was published. Do you know what year it first came out? We should look it up. Yes. I'll do it quick. I have. But it was written and drawn by Frank Miller. Yeah, He's both. that's true. He's written and, and this is still when his drawings were good. Yeah, I was going to say his <laughs> best art, I would argue. Ooh, yeah, I, the best. I yeah. agree. Ooh. Hold on. Let's pause right there because that's been a hot, a hot. Okay, so this was published in 1991. Nice. To 1992. So, yeah. So it's been a hot debate. You know, we I think we talked about it. I don't know what episode we talked about it. It hasn't Frank Miller has these new covers for Marvel and a lot of people hate it. A lot of people are like, "No, this is some cool shit. Like Frank Miller is the man still. He's just doing something different." I feel like we talked about it briefly and then I saw people talking about it that way, so I don't know how I'm feeling now. Like I like what do you guys how do you guys feel about that? Do you think it's garbage? I'd rather Watch somebody fart into a bucket and then watch, look at those covers more. Like his newer stuff? Yeah, like it was like Wolverine, The Thing, yeah. Ghost Rider. No, those things suck. Sorry. Yeah, they're big old stinky boo-boos. Yeah, like I'm not going to conform uh, yeah. <laughs> just because people are trying to be like, no, he's putting his own artistic twist. Dude, make a better twist. Do better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I saw like the, the defenders were basically saying like, you know, this is Frank Miller. Like he's he's like this is his stage of his art. He's trying something different. We've seen him do some of his best stuff. He's just kind of like it's a bit more gritty. Like people were using the word punk. Like it's like almost like a punk aesthetic. And I'm not trying to argue that, but it's just, it's not for me. Like, we've talked about artists here who are, like, are, like, legends. He's a legend, you know? And Sin City's art is stellar. Sin City, I loved the art. Yes, I didn't even really like Dark Knight, um, the Dark Knight Returns art, you know? But I really, really love the art in this. Yeah. I like Dark Knight Returns art still. Um, I do, too. You but, know what all, about all Frank Miller's comics except for Sin City? Oh, the later volumes a little bit, but like certain comics like Ronin, if you ever read Ronin, and a little bit of Dark Knight Returns, but some of his art, it's like hard to make out what's what. Yes. Oh, for even sure. Even in this comic. Yeah. When Marv is fighting the police, I noticed that. Yeah, like even if you ever read Ronin, there's literally moments where it's like, oh, this is supposed to be something, but it's like, I don't see that when I look at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just see like a bunch of shit. Yeah. So it's there, there's moments where his art fucking slaps, and then there's, there's moments where his art is just dog doo. Yeah, <laughs> doggy doo. He's like pretty inconsistent when it comes to his art. Oh, for sure. He's. I don't think. I think he'll go down as one of the most iconic artists and writers of all time. But I yeah. don't think like technically. I mean, I guess everybody has their own artistic style, but his kind of blows now. Mm. He definitely changed the game, you know. He's a legend no matter what. Yeah. Like, and then we I think we have talked about it very briefly, but he's had some like, you know, controversial things that he's done and said, but um he's actually backtracked a lot of it, like and apologized and real like he apparently used to be an alcoholic and he's gotten over that. Like he he's like, you know, hey, changed his ways basically and really tried to like become a better person. Like a better dude. So like, you know, like there's still I think we all respect Frank Miller, obviously. Yeah. But, like, he has some highs and lows. Yeah, and, like, people deserve second chances. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Also, I do feel, however, that you can't backtrack from having your hands in 9-11. <laughs> the dark reach of Frank Miller won't be left un yeah. unmentioned right. in this. <laughs> you got to listen to our Dark Knight Returns episode to understand what we're, what we're doing, but the conspiracy goes deep. Way deeper than anyone even thought. <laughs> That's actually the one storyline throughout the podcast. Throughout our <laughs> That's our one through line. <laughs> 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 Couldn't find any connections in here, though. Yeah, in Sin City, no, not yet. Maybe yeah. not in this book, but <laughs> yeah, you never know yet. in the later books. Um, who anyone want to do a synopsis? Um, okay, so this Marv, who is like this, basically a madman, a big, <laughs> a giant, like somehow lovable monster of a man. 
um, who like is like psych- literally psychotic, has like episodes and takes medicine for it and stuff yeah, he like takes that. Antipsychotics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, he's just so he's like unstable as it is. He ha- the story starts and Marv is getting it on with this woman that he keeps referring to as a goddess and like he is he throughout the whole book that he's just constantly mentioning how kind she was as an excuse to like do all of this brutality but yeah well, so he, Ma- he ends up yeah he has sex with this who you later find out is like this high class escort yeah and goldie was goldie, her name yeah yeah but he wakes up hours later after having this fling with her and she's dead next to him yeah in his bed. He has no idea how it happened. Yeah. And at first he's like, he even, he like, he floats the possibilities like, oh shit, did I do this in a psychotic episode of like mm, craziness? Yeah. Did I murder her? And then he's like, no, he's like, I would like, never. He's like, yeah, he's like, well, he's like, he's also like, there's no marks on her. He's like, this is a trained killer or a killer yeah. born. Yeah. Then, yeah. What's cool about Marv is even though he's, he has morals, even though he's, he, like well, not savage. only does he have morals. Yeah. yeah. He's a savage. He has morals. He also like for being so insane is like hyper observant of the world around him. Yeah. Um, like he like, like literally his through his narration throughout, you can like, he just tells it like it is about everybody that like walks through, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Walks through the panels. But he's like, so he's definitely like Frank Miller's brand of hero. Yeah. Like how we're talking about the morality and everything. But he's like, he knows Sin City. So he, that observant part, like that's how he survives. Like if he does, like he, he even says himself, he's like, I'm not a smart guy. I'm one of the dumbest guys you'll ever meet. But in Sin City, he's one of the best guys to be because like he's got the size, he's got the strength he's yeah. got the the street smarts and like people aren't going to generally fuck with him because you see what happens when people fuck with Marv. Yeah. yeah. Mar- no, he's Marv- a big monstrous motherfucker. Marv essentially wakes from Goldie being dead and is like, I'm going to kill everyone all the way to the top. Yeah. yeah. Immediately. Immediately. Yeah. Well, he yeah. caught feelings like instantly for this girl because she was the only person that was like nice to him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, she In was kind to time. him, and he was like, like the opening line. God, the dialogue. There's so many iconic lines. The opening Frank line. Miller's a great writer. We could shit on some of his art, but like, I, I never writing, hated his writing. Yeah, I for always sure. loved his writing. And so, uh, opening line is uh, something along the lines of, "She says she wanted me," or uh, "She says she wanted me." She seems like she means it, or something like that. Um, it's just like everything is so, and like the framing of this book, it's one of like, just like the experience of reading this book, like going through the panel by panel, page by page in itself is like a journey. You know what I mean? No, it really works that Frank Miller is artist and writer. Like there's something there where he could put everything, Mm. even like it's black and white, but he's called, he's inking it too. Yeah. So the shadows are super important in Sin City, I noticed. Like it's the black and the white, obviously with the morality and stuff, but like the way he draws everything is gritty, except for fucking Kevin's face, which is so fucking creepy. Sharp. Yeah. Sharp and creepy. Yeah. yeah. yeah and Kevin's, just, all you can see is the reflection of his glasses. Yeah. Kevin's yeah. face. Kevin, Kevin is horrifying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even in the movie with Elijah Wood playing. Dude, Elijah Wood did a great Kevin. Perfect casting. It was creepy as fuck. Yeah, just the way he was a mute. Yep. Yeah. Mute, silent. That's how, so that's part of the mystery. He's like, he realizes this dude named Kevin, he's like this silent ninja, right? Like he fights (laughs) like Spider-Man. The way Frank Miller drew him fighting reminded me of Spider-Man. all over the place. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Dude, yeah. So that's how he snuck in without Marv hearing. Yeah. He's like that quiet. Yeah. A killer born. Because he killed Goldie. Yeah, he kills Goldie. Tries to frame. But uh, it's kind of cool because it's implied like that Marv has nothing to lose. And because this is the first woman slash person that's been nice to him for so long, he's like, you know what? I'm going to get justice for this woman. And he's like, but all I know how to do is beat up people and get answers. And then like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so he like, does, like other people would be like more detective about it. He's like, no, I'm just going to punch my way to the top. No, yeah. he literally, <laughs> and he goes on a murder <laughs> spree across Dude, town. He kills a lot of people. Yeah. He kills a lot of people. 
<clears throat> Dude, I love he when enjoys he enjoys it. In some of the most, br- the best is when he's driving and he just has that cop's head and he's holding it against the pavement as he's driving. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to answer the, me soon. Yeah, dude. <laughs> that whole montage of while, while he's like, it's just going scene by scene of him like brutalizing people for answers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It is so well done. It's I think great. this one guy in the alley, he's like, he shoots him in the stomach and he's like, still not getting his answers. He's like, you know, you're going to die, right? Like, he's just like, you should, you should say something like, and then he shoots the dude in the head. As soon as he gets an answer, he's like, cool. Like, yeah, Marv yeah. is so brutal. He takes that guy's coat that he shoots too. He's like, you're going to bleed all coat. over that nice coat. <laughs> yeah. I, speaking of the movie, Mickey Rourke was incredibly Perfect. casted Perfect, as yeah. Marv. Yeah. Yeah. He was Unbelievable as well. Yeah, that's a really faithful comic to film adaptation of a character. It really yeah. is. Dude, it my, really and is. it just, oh, he's like, I could never picture anybody else as Marv now. Yeah, no. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, there are some times where I'm like, recast it, but not Marv. Nah, yeah. don't recast Marv. It's funny that the guy he's chasing is called the Rourke. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's <laughs> Rourke, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is cool. No, but Ro- the Rorks, they're uh, also like, this is, it's just such a good comic. And I do like, I do want to mention, they do use a lot of like homophobic slurs, and but it's also 1991. You know what I mean? Like, so. It well, he's is- also, yeah, it's homophobic, but it's also like this character, Marv. It's Marv. It's, it's not Exactly. It, it's Marv. Like he's not, I don't think he's PC to begin with. Like, no, he's literally murdering people. No, I know, yeah. but like I know what you're referring to like when he calls his lady detective friend, he's like, "Yeah, she's a dyke, but God knows why with that body." Yeah, like, <laughs> but it's like this, dude, this, this dude, like on an IQ level, he's an idiot. He's just yeah. a mindless thug. He literally Wait, takes antipsychotics. So, oh. and who plays her in the movie? Oh, uh, <laughs> what's her name? Carla. Gugino or whatever. Gugino, yeah. Yeah. Who is the mom in Spy Kids? (laughs) (laughs) It is Robert Rodriguez. Yeah, old uh, Robbie Rod. Oh, yeah, there we go. Robert Rodriguez directed. Using his uh, greatest actors. (laughs) Dude, I I love Robert Rodriguez. That was her name, right? Lucille. Yeah. Dude, honestly, every character you care about, and so many people die, good and bad. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like, there's a lot of lives lost in this story. Yeah. A lot of people die. Sin City, baby. Hey. Hey. Sin City. Hey. I like it, like, especially after living out here and reading Sin City, like, it's clearly a cross between Vegas and Los Angeles. Oh, for sure. Because it's like, it's got like its own Hollywood parts, but it's also like way more debaucherous and yeah like, uh, you don't think there's lawless. any like 80s new york city in there not for really sure. Definitely. i mean maybe a little bit oh uh, you could tell like even just the layout like i don't know if it's in this volume or in the other ones like they have the tar pits out here we have the la brea tar pits i think it's supposed to be uh, west coast especially oh, if you gotcha. read the later volumes like they jump into the ocean like it's definitely the west coast makes sense okay yeah yeah it's like a, it's like yeah it's basically sin city is like in Frank Miller's mind, you lifted up Vegas and dropped it on top of LA. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Got gotcha. you. I like that. There's a whole part of Old Town where like prostitution is legal and and like they run it like with guns and everything. <laughs> yeah, like the cops don't go to Old Town. They can't go. They can get killed if they go there. Yeah, yeah, dude. Old Town was always one of my favorite concepts uh, from <laughs> Sin City. Just like I love the idea of women just being boss babes. You know what I mean? Just <laughs> <laughs> one of them was dressed like Wonder Woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. It like was a bunch of them. Yeah. Did you notice? In the comic, there's like a very Wolverine looking character yes, at the bar. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. Yep. Yeah. It's exactly like yeah. that. <laughs> they call it Wervel. Yeah, Wervel yeah, or something. Yeah. <laughs> and I like that. You see, like that's a nice Frank Miller Wolverine, not not this new one. Yeah, not that ugly one. <laughs> Who's the girl, the stripper? Nancy. Nancy. Je- yeah. Jessica Alba in the Jessica movie. Alba, yeah. I know, but she refused to get naked. <sighs> Lame. <laughs> <laughs> so that's <Can't> hilarious. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's still uh, banging though, and that as Nancy. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> especially as a kid, I was like, "Wow, this is awesome." <laughs> yeah, I was like, "This is the best day of my life." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Dude, honestly, for because it this the movie came out what two thousand five or something like that two thousand four. I feel like it was when did it come out? Four, yeah, two thousand five. You're right. You're right. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so I feel like you know what I mean. Like for me, this was perfect because it was dark, it was gritty, it was edgy, it was violent, uh, it was sexy. It's also um, like very like noir. Like it reads oh, like a noir. For sure. It's got every It's got like a detective like like I'm like I'm starting to lose like he even says he's like I'm losing track of time. I don't know what the date is. I haven't slept in a while. I haven't taken my meds in a while. Yeah. It's all to, like blur into I think this comic also has uh, won the Guinness World Record for most shadowy boobs in a comic. <laughs> <laughs> a lot dude, of shadowy boobs. Dude, <laughs> and I'm not complaining. <laughs> oh, no, that's a, that's a plus. That's a net positive on the Joe Pesci scale. <laughs> yeah, Joe Pesci would be like, Shadowy boobs. <laughs> <laughs> and the character's name Marv. Oh, man. It's just yeah. Like, it's yeah, this was made <laughs> oh, for the oh, Joe Pesci shit. scam. Oh, Damn. that's hilarious. <laughs> um, there's so many interesting, every character, uh, Frank Miller does a great job of really making you care about everyone, like whether you love them or hate them, like from the people that are getting murdered, like they're at least like very comical. You know what I mean? Like that are the, like those panels that we're talking about earlier, but also like the characters that have more roles like Lucille and, uh, you know, the prostitutes from old town and yeah. like, they're all characters you care about. You know what I mean? Even like Kevin, who is a terrifying monster, like, you you're like he he evokes emotion you know, is what i'm trying to well, say yeah especially when you learn his backstory he was yeah. like this like lost altar boy who had cannibalistic <laughs> tendencies who like the the cardinal of sin city like is his uncle is like uncle slash mentor and they like partake in cannibalism together yeah, yeah. his uncle uh his uncle they say the senator says uh, no, it's a cardinal. It's cardinal. No, but there's Rourke. also like, a senator. Well, yeah, there's right. senator work and there's cardinal work. They're brothers. Yeah, yeah. And the senator uh, yeah. even says the cardinal could have been president, but he chose the cloth. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, a cardinal. Cardinal Rourke is who's like kind of orchestrating everything, and he says he says about Kevin. He's like he. Oh, you think he's silent, right? But I've heard him, and he's. Is His the voice, voice of is an like angel. The voice of an angel, <laughs> yeah. and he says that when he when he. Okay, so what Kevin does is he's been killing women, specifically prostitutes, and eating them. Yeah. And he'll, like, eat pieces of you in front of you. So, like, Lucille oh. gets captured. Her hand gets cut off. But, like, she doesn't know it. Like, she wakes up missing a hand. And she he's, like, eat, he she's telling the story. Oh, yeah. And he's he eats her hand in front of her. And it's traumatized her. This is what happens when Mar finds her. But uh, we find out when he eats bodies, when he eats these women, apparently he hears God and, like, that the Cardinal's like, oh, I partake with him too. And I also hear the voice of God. And it's just like, fucking what? Yeah, you motherfuckers are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe, so I mean, dark. but maybe yeah. that, maybe, <laughs> gets dark. look at, listen, Frankie is just alluding to the Illuminati. Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what's funny is like, yeah, if you read Frank Miller, and honestly, there's a lot of Ed Brubaker books like the ones I read that take place in like LA and dude, they refer to so many things that like are, or he refers to so many things that are like pretty big conspiracy theories as far as Hollywood slash like Illuminati esque type things mm -hmm. where like, it's like really big out here as far as like the rumored underbelly of Hollywood and uh, like Ed Brubaker tackles it. And there's like, there's like some weird occult shit and like you had like the Manson mm -hmm. family and all that shit out here. So right. that's a big part of like LA West coast. Lore, lore, yeah. Oh, I'm serious. You have, the, you have you have the Bohemian Grove out here, which back in the '90s or '80s, which is where Alex Jones went undercover and took that very famous video of people of the owl. I, yeah, that, yeah, that's a real place. That's an actually that's where the idea to make the atom bomb was pitched. Did you know that? Damn, crazy. The Bohemian, no. the Bohemian Grove is like a real place. Whether or not they're the Illuminati, that's for debate. But right, no, yeah, no, I've seen that video. I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. So like, yeah. So yeah, it's cool that like, yeah, he does incorporate some like what you think is like weird and dark, but it's like kind of like it's been alluded to in LA. If you ever read The Godfather, the book, that also mm -hmm. alludes to crazy shit like that. I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah. In the book, The Godfather, the main character is not Michael. It's like Johnny Fontaine, the Frank Sinatra type character. Crazy. You've read The Godfather book? Oh yeah, it's great. Mario Puzo. Mario Puzo. It's a great book. Nice. Yeah. 
Sorry, going back to Sin City. Also a great book, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's connected. <laughs> no, I, I will honestly like say that this is probably like one of the most iconic, uh, timeless graphic novels that have been put out. And like you could only read this one and it would feel complete. Like, you know what I mean? If that's what I love about Sin City is it's just like an anthology in this uh, you know, bedlam of deviousness, you know? Yeah. First three books are straight fire. It's hard goodbye, a dame to kill for, and then that yellow bastard. And yeah, those three all bang. Four, five, and six are not nearly as strong. Mm. And then the seventh one is huge, the fat book, and and that one's sick. And that pieces it all together. Yeah. And it works out like a Quentin Tarantino timeline because the seventh book, you realize, takes place before any of the shit you've just read. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so doesn't the movie do that too? Yeah, yes. it does. But it, it's, mm. it's borrowing from like the actual like book itself. Graphic novels. Well, yeah, because the movie is basically just like piecing together different books from the graphic novel and interweaving them. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, do you remember in yeah. the movie Josh Hartnett at the end of it? Yeah. Yes. Remember he's like in the elevator with that one hooker who snitched on everyone? Yeah, the one from uh, Gilmore Girls. Exactly, yeah, Gilmore Girls. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that character who is only in that like brief scene in the movie, he's like the main villain kind of overall. And then like in the seventh book is heavily featured. So it's pretty sick. Yeah, uh, honestly, it sucks that the second one didn't work out. You know what I mean? The second movie was, I didn't watch too much of it, but it looks So the good. first movie doesn't have every volume included? No, no. it's just like the first three. Sure it's just the first three books, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah, it's a fusion, definitely, of the first three. Well, oh, actually, I don't think it's a Dame to Kill for. I think it's, is it a Dame to Kill for? Is it a Dame Isn't to Kill? Sin City 2? Yeah, yeah, yes. So I think it might be, it's the one with it's Nancy. The, it's the hard goodbye in that yellow bastard, because in the movie is the yellow guy. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that guy in the movie. So it's but definitely yeah, the, the second movie is called the, first, the Dame to Kill for. Okay, yeah. so that's probably the second volume, but I heard it wasn't good. I, yeah. I watched, I put it on, and it's honestly, I think it gets like, does it shouldn't get as much hate as it go, gets. It's literally just like the first, but it's just, they waited too long, and yeah, like, exactly. there was just like tons of production issues, and it was held in limbo for forever, and it, you just can almost feel that on the film, you know mm. what I mean? Mm. Yeah. But it's like really, I also don't think it deserves all the hate it gets. Maybe what I'll about, it wasn't there a 300 sequel? Rise of God. 300, Rise of Oh, that's Empire. a big stinker. Yeah. yeah. But 300 doesn't even need a sequel. And no. you get to see, but you do get to see, what's her name's boobies? Who? <laughs> uh, yeah. Is it Evergreen? <laughs> Evergreen, Eva Green, yeah. Yeah. That's I don't cool. know if I know who that is. What else is she in? Yeah, you do. She's been in a bunch of shit. She was in, wasn't that her in Ragnarok? Was that her in Ragnarok? No, <laughs> Ragnarok. That's Kate Blanchett. Uh, <laughs> I know Kate Blanchett. <laughs> is that Kate Blanchett? Yes. Wow. <laughs> Hella is right. Yeah, yeah that's Hella, who Hella that's was. Oh, I didn't realize that was. I'm, then I'm, I can't remember what. Who <laughs> She's knows, in Casino man? Royale. Yeah, kill me. Damn, don't start listening movies. I'm telling you. Oh, I, 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 all the movies she's in, I just haven't seen. <laughs> <laughs> seen Casino Royale? No. Dude. I don't think I've seen any James Bond. Sorry. What? Whoa. Oh, dude. I played, I played and... Goldeneye a lot. <laughs> we should actually do a Goldeneye episode. That made sure, me but... that made me just fucking <laughs> You that was never, crazy. Yeah. I feel like you've Dude, never seen a James I Bond. Feel I played like, a lot of James Bond video games. I feel like you never, would love James Bond. I probably would, yeah. I've seen all the Austin Powers. I love Austin yeah, Powers. That's what <laughs> fun of. I grew up on James Bond. My dad's like James Same. Bond. Same. So My dad watching. loved him. Yeah. And, like, I think yeah. most like old school men, like, you know, like yeah, you know, he's just killing, yeah. drinking, fucking Oh, yeah, bitches. my dad definitely <laughs> loves those movies. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's every guy's fantasy is just to kill, drink, and fuck. <laughs> <laughs> It's also Sin City. It's just that's the kind of exactly. It is. That's totally. What it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's every guy's fantasy. <laughs> yeah, James Bond's cool, man. Yeah, yeah. Watch more James Bond. Wait. So then, yeah. So that, okay, he's killing his way to the top. He pretty much starts the unfolds conspiracy that like low key the politicians want to take over Old Town. They don't want to like cede this part of the city to the prostitutes anymore. 
Yeah. So they're like they're like gearing up for a war. Like even in the comic, they're like, oh, we're gonna go to war soon. Like the prostitutes are talking like, you know, they have an army, whatever. Yeah. And uh and that's like featured. That's like isn't that like volume six or something like that? It's pretty much like through like five or four or something. Yeah, like prostitute wars. The, the, yeah. the actual war. Yeah, the prostitute wars. The prostitute now, wars. The battle for an old town. Well, even in a dame to kill for it, because in the movie with Clive Owen, they like they try to like avert the war between the politicians and the prostitutes. Yeah. Frank Miller was talking about things that we're still talking about now. Legalized <laughs> prostitution. Yeah, you know? back in nineteen ninety one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Legalized prostitution. Give them weapons. Like <laughs> let let them com- commandeer a part of the city and <laughs> run it as their own city state. <laughs> <And Yeah. laughs> Wait a minute. So maybe we've had Frank Miller wrong this whole time. It wasn't that he was orchestrating things. He has the foresight. He oh. can see into the future. Oh. He knew. Oh. Right, he knew 9/11 was necessary in order to build, build a more progressive nation. <laughs> well, hey, being able to see the future doesn't mean you could affect the future. He could only see and only put it into his art. Is <laughs> <laughs> oh. the long dark reach of Frank Miller suddenly like a? Uh... It's gotten to me. It's corrupted. No, because I still don't mind. like. No, if you if I say like if I had said I did like those new covers, then you know it's gotten to That's Okay. True. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> but it's almost there. But yeah, That's- so Marv uncovers his conspiracy theory and finds out that the Cardinal is like behind all this shit and literally takes it to the Cardinal's house. After we, we didn't even mention the sick fight between him and Kevin. Oh man, yeah. the, the fight with Kevin and he loses. He loses. Yeah, he loses. Yeah, the first he fight ready. he loses. Yeah, he yeah. Got his second ass kicked by Kevin. Second fight he fucks Kevin up. Well, the first fight is so cool because like, dude, Marv is so much bigger than Kevin, but Kevin's just yeah. like. But he uses Kevin McAllister tactics to fight <laughs> yeah. Kevin. That's true. Uh, he really does. Yeah. I like that. And Kevin I like, avoids it all. Yeah, I like the panels where he goes shopping for like barbed wire. Gloves, yeah, the, this, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Gladys, his gun's name is Gladys. Yeah. <laughs> He's always yeah. saying Gladys. He's like, Gladys is with me, <laughs> dude. Yeah, um, dude, like him. The art is so cool. The art mm-hmm. is really sick. I would say, like, yeah, once again, like this book and also like Yellow Bastard, Dame Kiffer, has the best art. This is easily some of Frank Miller's best art. Not, yeah. no question, no question. Yeah. Yeah, I really love it. Specifically, this book has like, because there's like, there's scenes where you get like close up of Marb's face and it's so like wrinkly and like, like yeah. detailed. Yeah. Oh, it's like craggled. He looks, li- he looks like he's like chiseled stone. It's cool to see what like he can cracked. do with black and white ink. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I loved at the end too. Like, and we're getting all the close ups of Marv's face in the electric chair, yeah. but also like when it's a skeleton and it looks so cool. Yeah. Talking about like the all black and the white and the way like he just keeps getting shocked and then he's just smiling and he's like, that's all you got, you know, like it just, uh, it's so cool. So badass. Yeah. Yeah. So then it pretty much ends with Marv getting the electric chair because of the killing spree he's just been on. No, he's, he's set up. He's blamed for everything Kevin did. Yeah, he's blamed for everything Kevin did. You're right. Which is fucked. Yeah. But, but he does take solace in knowing that the women know that it's not true. Well, he, he's, he's just happy that he managed to like, oh, we forgot about Goldie's twin sister. Wendy. Yeah. 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 He thinks he's hallucinating her the whole time because he's getting ch- actually chased by he's Wendy. He's getting followed by this girl who looks like Goldie. And he's like, Goldie? I swear I just saw her. Yeah. yeah. And then it's actually Goldie has this identical twin sister, Wendy, who thinks that Marv killed her. So he's trying to get she's trying to get revenge for her sister and tries to kill him. And then more or less, he like lets himself get captured, even tied up beaten tortured and then finally he's like all right you stupid broads and then like yeah <laughs> gets out of the ropes he's like let's go it's like what the fuck yeah and he and he's like i don't hit women yeah I don't like hit. that yeah, I, I love that about marv too you know like just something like that you're like you're a good guy you, know? yeah. you might beat and torture everyone else but you're still a good guy yeah. yeah i also like that in the comic marv gets hit by a car and just gets up and keeps going yeah, <laughs> yeah oh dude tank. he's a, marv's a tank dude yeah. Yeah. marv is different yeah dude marv is a he's mon- different. <laughs> he's a monster 
Yeah, no, he's a beast of a man. Yeah. Yeah, and then he gets gets the electric chair and he dies, but he kind of dies happy. Or you know what's cool is before he gets the chair, Wendy comes and visits him and thanks thanks him for like getting justice for his her a sister. Conjugal visit. Yeah, a conjugal visit. <laughs> and then, you know, he, because he's like losing his mind and he hasn't been taking his pills, he calls her Goldie again. Yeah. And she even says, like, it's fine, you can call me Goldie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a very kind of like a really bittersweet ending. Yeah. Yeah, it's tragic. It is but, tragic. like it's a tragedy <laughs> literally, but it's also like he's he's going out with a bang. He's going out yeah, the way like Marv would his life. Yeah. Yeah. See, I'll just do prostitutes and hookers, man. They give meaning to lives. <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> Comics and chronic pro sex workers. Yeah, exactly. Sex work is real work. It is for sure. Cody knows he's done it before. Dude, I wish. It would be a funny cosplay for like Comic Con if you're Marv, but you have a shirt that says that. <laughs> As sex work is real work. Yeah. And in every other way, you're Marv. You have the yeah, coat yeah, and yeah. stuff. Like you're, you have cuts across your face. You yeah. have the big nose. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at a picture. Stephen of- Lane could play a good Marv, though. Ooh. No? I think if we had yeah. to recast, Ooh, if we had Stephen to recast, Lang. yeah, Stephen Lang, he does look. I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, you just need a guy with like a really square jaw. I mean, also well, they, they just need to be willing to prosthetics with yeah. Mickey Rourke. Yeah. But Mickey Rourke also looks insane. Yeah, it wasn't that much. It was, <laughs> <laughs> it was mostly like the nose. It was the and nose the chin and like a little bit of his chin. Yeah, yeah. Or in that, he did look like Marv. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Craig, those Mickey Craig Rourke, he's played, he's played Marv and Whiplash. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> those are his acting staple contribution to comic book. Hey, yeah. man, one of them was awesome, and one of them gets more hate than it deserves. Yeah, Whiplash was cool. He wasn't as cool. Like, Justin Hammer was just such a good villain in that movie, whereas Whiplash is just... Mickey Rourke kind of just being his impersonation of a Russian guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want my bird. Yeah. yeah. He wanted the cockatoo. Yeah. I, I did like the final fight with Iron Man, War Machine, and Whiplash. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That is a cool fight. Maybe we should revisit Iron Man, too, because it's like so. Maybe we should. Maybe some movies don't deserve the hate that they get. Yeah. <laughs> uh, especially with like the way the I bet you the way that the Marvel Universe is going when we revisit some of those older ones, even the ones we don't so like, <laughs> you're we're gonna be like, oh, that wasn't as yeah. bad as we thought. You some know, other shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's actually a really cool show on Vice. Um, this it's called Icons Unearthed. Huh. Unearthed or unearthed? Unearthed. Unearth. Unearthed. <laughs> It's it unearthed. <laughs> it's unearthed. Unearthed. Icons unearthed. Unearthed. Or on earth, are you saying? Unearth. Okay. I can't speak. Unearthed. Not You'll know what I mean. Unearthed. unearthed. Yeah. I'm calling it it's wrong. <laughs> that's, that's the wrong pronunciation. That's how Marv <laughs> would say it. Yeah, that's how Marv would say it. You guys gave anyway. me shit for saying biopic. No, you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> no, you said biopic. <laughs> or biopic, yeah. but so in this fourth season what it's doing is like the first season was talking about star wars i think then they did a season on the simpsons then they did fast and furious and now they're they did mcu uh it's like eight eight episodes i think or six episodes something like that uh first they just kind of did overall then they were talking about like the early mcu movies and it was really interesting because it's I didn't know this at the time like I was such a huge fanboy when the movies were coming out and I thought there's no th- these are like wins they're sure wins like no brainers why wouldn't you make the avengers why wouldn't you make movies leading up to the avengers but they were so close to failing every time and I didn't realize that was the case like so many were almost flops and like <laughs> It was interesting. That's, I don't know. Yeah. It's a cool show. If you're interested in the MCU, I would say check it out. I also know some cool little MCU lore, specifically about Iron Man 1 and 2. Let's hear it. So remember Drop how it. Terrence Howard originally played uh, Don Cheadle's character? War yes. Machine? Yes. War Machine, yeah, yeah. So because Terrence Howard was actually the first one to sign on to Iron Man 1, he made the most money contractually from that movie. Oh, but him and John Favreau like had beef on set, and John Favreau didn't mm-hmm. want him back as War Machine. That's why he got recasted. Damn, with Don Cheadle, crazy. Yeah. yeah, I mean, movie sets are working environments. If you know, don't, right? if you're an asshole, no one wants to work with you. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what specifically the beef was, but for some reason they did not get along. Yeah, but I've also heard that in that 
if you take like Terrence Howard's side of the story, he just wanted the money again, and they were like, "Nah, we don't want to do that again." I mean, but also like if you pay- so they hired Don Cheadle didn't get as much money as him. That's the thing. Really, the Cheeds? Yeah, yeah. No, Ooh. he didn't. Damn. That's why. That's you, yeah. You see, so like you, you, he might have a he might have a case onto why like. Maybe John Favreau had beef, but also it could be that they just didn't want to pay him. I do like Terrence Howard as an actor. Oh yeah, Hustle and Flow. I think yeah, dude, Hustle and Flow is like actually like a genuinely a good movie. Yeah, it's really good. I think the first movie I saw him in is Big Mama's House. <laughs> <laughs> he's the villain in Big Mama's House. You're right. He he's also the villain in something. He's in the villain in a bunch of shit. Yeah, he looks villain. He just stares tense. at people. Yeah. yeah, you're like, oh fuck. Come on, man. It's always the man. <laughs> Mine. That's hilarious. Terrence Howard. What if it's revealed Don Cheadle is a is a scroll in Secret Invasion, oh. and then Terrence Howard is like <laughs> comes out of the shadows? Oh shit, that'd be or like a War Machine comes out and like fighting the like in War Machine armor, and he's like about to shoot Don Cheadle, and then the helmet goes back, and it's Terrence Howard. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you guys are racist. <laughs> <laughs> Don Cheadle's whatever. I don't know. I like Don Cheadle. I like, not Don Cheadle. I like Don Cheadle, Cheadle the actor. Yeah. I like him. I like him as an actor. I don't care about him as War Machine. Yeah, like he's, yeah, he's he doesn't pretty, pretty much. He's do pretty it. bland War Machine. Yeah, he's like huh, yeah, I'm I War agree. Machine. <laughs> yeah, that's all his lines. Yeah. He's just like so smarmy. <laughs> yeah, it's not that they're bad lines like in Infinity War <laughs> when it's like should we should we bow and he's like yeah he's a king. Like that's a gr- like his delivery of that line is yeah. always sticks in my head. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The cheeds, I don't know. The cheeds. <laughs> the cheeds. <laughs> the cheeds. I call them the cheeds. Boogie Nights. Come Boogie on. Boogie Nights is great. Actually, just yeah. rewatched that movie like a week ago. I haven't watched it. In that's a, a great long movie. Time. It's, it's fucking incredible. Also, I didn't like. I forgot how star stacked it is. Oh yeah, like, yeah. Everyone's in that shit. Yeah, every massive cast. Hoffman. Everyone Thomas when James. they're like young. Yeah, when they're super yep. young. Alfred Molina. Alfred Molina. Burt Reynolds, John C. The Riley. OG, John C. Riley. Heather Graham. William H. Macy. Louis Guzman. William H. Macy, yeah. Yeah, yeah wildly packed. Wildly packed. Wildly <laughs> packed. Marky Mark. Julianne Moore. Of course. Julianne Dude, Moore. Dude, Sin City, the movie was wildly packed. True. It True. was. A lot of celebs in that shit. Yep. Yeah. Also, a lot of uh, Robert Rodriguez's favorite people to work with i like that he's definitely a director that loves working with the same people over and over and i like that yeah 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 that is cool i mean grindhouse and and sin city have a similar vibe at least parts of grindhouse for sure for right. sure and also robert Rodriguez and quinta tarantino yeah quinta tarantino worked together on uh what was you know the vampire grindhouse. Mer- grindhouse. yeah okay grindhouse. oh yeah Yep, and they work together on from dusk till dawn. True. Yeah, very true. That's a that's a great combo. That's a potent combo. Yeah, yeah. That they should do hilarious. another thing. Damn. <laughs> yeah, I love anytime they. Yeah, I think I Quentin guess, wow. Tarantino did do one scene in the movie. He did the scene. No, he's where in the, the movie. It's him and George Clooney that are the main. Uh, no, I'm talking about in uh, Sin City. Sin City. Oh, yeah, really? really? He huh. he did the scene where that one dude gets like shot in the head with the arrows. The two guys are having really quirky dialogue. That's yes, Quentin Tarantino. You're right. You're absolutely oh. right. It is him. Yeah, he like wrote that one scene and directed that one scene. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, you're all right. Quentin, uh, Quentin Tarantino is also in Little Nicky. Yeah. Yes, we are all gonna <laughs> yeah, die. He plays the preacher on the street. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so random. <laughs> yeah, but if yeah, actually, for a long time, I didn't know that was Quentin Tarantino. Well, so cool story, and you can look this up because I saw it on a podcast. It, him and Adam Sandler are friends. When he wrote *Inglorious Bastards*, he wrote *The Bear Jew* for Adam Sandler. Yes, I have heard that. Yeah, but Adam Sandler wasn't available to film it, so he made uh, <laughs> Eli Roth be the Bear Jew. Yeah, yeah. Damn, not a fan of Eli Roth. I'll be honest. His movies are too yeah. fucked up. Hostile, I do not like. I remember like when it came movie. out. Well, it was just super edgelordy. Oh, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's like, so I don't want to watch that. It's just like, well, I don't want to watch someone get tortured, honestly. It's just not my, Torture it's porn. Not my thing. It was the yeah. horror of the time, you know? It's true. Yeah, but it was, I'm not it was saying it's, better. I'm not saying it's good. Uh, what else yeah. did he do? I, I'm just it sounds saying like. You're like defending it, Cody. <laughs> it sounds like you're defending it. Did Eli Roth also do Green, the Green something? Inferno? The in the, yeah, Green Inferno. Yeah. Yeah. I like that I movie. I have seen I have seen Cabin Fever. I don't hate that movie. That's Eli Roth. 
Have you guys seen Cabin Fever? Cabin Fever is <laughs> mad a corny. Bit of it. Yeah, right. Like, see, like, so, like, Eli Roth. I don't know. He's he's got misses for me. He doesn't. He's not. I'm not a fan. I like him more as the Bear Jew than I do as a director. Okay, yeah, yeah, agreed. Exactly. I agreed. Exactly. Have you guys seen Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Yes, yes, I have seen that. So I just rewatched it maybe like two weeks ago, and when Leo goes to Italy, and they're they're doing the narration, it's like, oh, Leo's character did Italian movies for. The Italian director, uh, who was they were pretending to be in Inglorious Bastards, Antonio Magadetti. There we go. Oh. And so I, I like just heard that, and I was like, "Oh shit, that's crazy!" That like Quentin Tarantino links his movies like I that. Didn't realize that. Yeah, <laughs> they're all in one shared universe. You're saying they, the Quentin he admitted like they are in one shared universe. Which is insane when you think about Kill Bill. Yeah. Yeah. But you should also never actually do like the Avengers of that universe. Oh, God, no. <laughs> that would be so bad. Well, that would just not work. Even the Kill Bill female assassins is referenced in Pulp Fiction when Uma Thurman's character says she did a pilot called Fox Force 5 and we were five different female assassins. Uh, and she says there was a black one who was good with knives. There is this one. And then like that's who is in Kill Bill. You got Vivica <laughs> Fox, Lucy Liu, the girl with the eye patch. Yes. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, okay. All of his so, movies are connected. And they also all have Steve, what's his name? Uh, is it Who? Steve Buscemi? No, Mars. Uh, Michael Madsen. Michael Madsen. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's true. But then I'm also thinking Reservoir Dogs connects to Pulp Fiction, it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does, because Michael Madsen's character's last name is Vega, and John Travolta's character is Vinny Vega, Vincent Vega, in uh, in Pulp Fiction. And they're supposed to be brothers. But what about, um, what's his name? Uh, fucking, why can't I think of his name right now? Ooh, come on, dog. Tim Roth? Tim Roth? No, no, this other actor. Hold on, I'm going to think of it in one second. I'm going to think of it in one second. Harvey Keitel, isn't he like supposed to be? He's not the same guy he is, but he he's in Quentin Tarantino's movies he a is, lot. But yeah. is he connected to Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction? No, no he's just like the cleaner. He's just the cleaner upper, yeah. Okay, he's yeah. the cleaner in Pulp Fiction. He's what's his name in Mister Somebody? Yeah, in Reservoir Dog, Dogs. Yeah, he's in. Movie. He's the detective dude in um, Jackie Brown. Yeah, you're right. Jackie yeah. Brown's a great movie. Underrated Tarantino yeah, like movie. A lot of people hate on it, say it's his worst, and I disagree. Oh, see, I disagree. I find more that people just don't know of it. Yeah. Like people, oh, when, they, yeah, exactly. when they think of Quentin Tarantino's greatest movies, they never reference Jackie Brown, and that's probably one of his strongest. Yeah, I feel like when I see people list it, and it's included. It's always at the end, and I would. I'm like, yo, honestly, I'd put it above Once a Time Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I'd, I'd put it above definitely Grindhouse. Um, I put it above uh, Django. Ooh. I didn't like Django to be honest. Uh, Django was kind of ridiculous. I like Django, but I, I liked Django. I like Leonardo DiCaprio. He's a great villain. I'd put it above Hateful Eight. Yeah, I wasn't a huge fan of Hateful Eight. I, I liked, liked Hateful Eight. I didn't like Hateful Eight when I first saw it on a rewatch. I really enjoyed it. Have you guys seen the extended cut? God, no. no. Oh, it's like if, a TV I don't know or if not I a TV thing, thing but Netflix split cut. it up like into like longer. a mini series. Yeah, it's yeah, like three episodes or it? something. Uh, yeah. I watched most of it and slept through some of it. <laughs> It's a lot of hateful eight. Yeah, I don't know. I just it's a I'm lot not... of hateful eight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Glorious Bastards is I don't know. That might be my favorite Tarantino movie. Really, I like I it know. a lot, dude. I, really I do like think it. I do think I think, uh, I think Christoph favorite. Waltz is Tarantino's yeah. best villain. Yeah, I love yeah. Christoph Waltz. I do love him as an actor. Yeah. I also just love the funny, last, I think, villainous. I think the last scene of Inglorious Bastards is probably one of the best last scenes in his movies when he oh, caused yeah, a yeah, swastika yeah. into his forehead. Yeah. Yeah. Tarantino's so fucking iconic. Um, I know, he I know we're just a bunch of left in the chamber. One more that yeah, it's gonna be his last one. I know we're a bunch yeah. of white dudes talking about how awesome Tarantino is, but <laughs> on a podcast, <laughs> what, does that, what does that mean? Breaking new ground. It means every, <laughs> we're I just, not breaking any new ground. Yeah. Uh, well, this is a commonly, we're not saying anything that nobody's said before, you know, I thought you were talking about, I thought you were talking about like some racist illusion. Cause he always uses the N word in his movies. Oh no. I was more just talking about how, White dudes who do podcasts notoriously love Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, he is, the fact of the matter is, like, he's also one of the few directors who writes and directs his own movies. Yeah. 
He's yeah, he's the, the Frank Miller of war. film. <laughs> exactly. No, exactly. Seriously. No, like I think is, so. Yeah. I think there's that connection there. Yeah. Like for real. I I, I think I think it works. He I think that's why we were kind of movies, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, but like I think that's why we were also like kind of focused on Quentin Tarantino for a while cuz they have similar vibes, similar flavors. Obviously gore, like he fits into the Sin City universe. Yep, exactly. Uh, noir is like built into a lot of the stories true, they write. True, like very true. Guns. Most of his movies do take place on the West Coast. Yeah. Mm. I would actually, Jackie Brown does, Pulp Fiction does, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood does, mm-hmm. Reservoir mm-hmm. Dogs does, a lot of mm-hmm. them do. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. They, they sync up. I don't know why I just did that. <laughs> <laughs> Jay just... <laughs> 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 Oh, well, I think well, on that note, we, yeah, the we've hit the Nexus. We're at the <laughs> next easy. <laughs> the next easy. Oh. Um, I'll give it a six, man. Easy six. I really like it's easy awesome. Six for me it's too. really enjoyable. It's one of it's the best. City. It's it's an icon. It's like up there with like best graphic novels I've ever made. I agree. Yep. I agree. I would say Sin City is a must read. Yeah, not just the hard goodbye, but a hard buy. Ooh. Yeah, and I plan on like buying a lot more Sin City. Maybe you should. They're cool, you know, man. I like really enjoyed reading all of it. I should actually reread it. I want to reread it. Yeah, nice. Yeah, but uh, I'll, yeah, it's so good. I don't want. I don't want to. Um, I don't want to leave this guy hanging. Six, six, six. Yeah. Oh, there he is. <laughs> is the devil himself playing the guitar or is it just does he have a minion like the dude in uh mad max fury road or something that just like follows him around well i'm jamming out on my guitar as we speak oh, <laughs> so have to look at the string <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and I'm playing the drums. Okay, I can do both at the same time. I mean, <laughs> rock and roll has always been satanic. Hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, be banished. Get out of here. We don't. <laughs> we'll see. In the name of Jesus, be gone, Satan. <laughs> no, I won't. I won't Whoa. stand for that. Not on this podcast. Yeah, that, that's not the, what? That's Every the time we see- boy coming out. Yeah. Every time we summon him, he can't stay in my house. I got to get rid of him. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't have to bring couch. Christ into this. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the only thing he doesn't fuck with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Easy Money 6. I recommend reading it, buying it, because uh, it is great. Seriously. Yeah. Also, yeah. if you're a digital comic reader, don't just get the physical copy for the, for this specifically. It's one of the things that like the way the pages turn and yeah. like the, from kinda, panel to panel, to have it in your hand. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, for sure. So we love you commies. Old Sin City in your hand. <laughs> we love you. Should we do a an- volume two or? Yeah. Definitely. Over, I mean, sometime over the course of time, for sure, we should. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're listening to this episode and you see us posted, comment, comment, and say do volume two if you want us to do volume two. Yeah. Give us the word. We'll, you know, we'll push it up to HQ. <laughs> yeah. We'll get it started. We'll get it going. Also, start trending hashtag release the Paddington episode. Yes. <laughs> if you want to see that, if you want to see, you want to see the Paddington it's in episode. the vault. <laughs> in the vault. We can only unlock it with your like spirit bomb like energy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> spirit bomb energy. <laughs> just uh, Anthony's with both hands up. Just <laughs> <laughs> and you could do that by donating to our Patreon. You could, uh, for five bucks a month, we'll give you some extra shit, hey. such as Perhaps the Paddington episode. Ooh. But right now we have the killing joke. That was our May episode. Who knows when this episode's out? Uh, but you'll have a new episode every month for just the Patreon people. So yeah. you should go Exclusive on. Exclusive access. Exclusive. Yes. It's not for anybody else's ears. Until next time. Adieu. <laughs> Peace. Adieu. <laughs> you sounded like Medea. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, you're listening to Comics and Chronic, and I'm Jake F.H. I'm Cody Cannon. And I'm Anthony Iannaccio. And you can tune in every Thursday to hear new episodes of Comics and Chronic. And make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter, at Comics and Chronic. That's Comics, the letter N, Chronic. We'll see you guys next week. Woo! Peace.